All right, you guys. Sorry about the delay. I'm not. <laughs> did I tell you guys? Did I ask you guys about that? Was that in a different class? So when I show this up here. Like an infinite. Oh, that's cool. Get it real close. Okay. So I, it was another class that I did this, and I mentioned I couldn't think of the name. It's called a fractal. You guys heard of fractals? Yeah. So fractals are like this. That's a good example. Oh, whoa, whoa, I didn't know it was going to do that. Yeah. So I guess that's a good one. A fractal is a, a, a infinitely repeating pattern. So it's like a spiral. You, you have a spiral, you just keep zooming in, it's a spiral forever. Fractals are that, but with different designs. So if you keep zooming in, you see the same thing. Repeat it over and over and over and over. This triangle one was a, a gif. It kept moving, but you have all these triangles. Every time you zoom in, well, it's over here. You see more of the triangles. But anyway, that's what like happens when I project the video of the projection. Look at it. Like mountains. Delay. It's cool. What? Yeah. From like one to the next. That's cool. Anyway, super side note. Um, where did we leave off yesterday? <laughs> Wouldn't that always be true? <laughs> um, so we had. I think it was, I think we didn't finish 1.e, right? Didn't I get through half of 1.e, and then we got on relative motion? The last thing I remember is we were talking about the uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did this, right? Yeah. We did this, but we didn't get to the back side. I don't, I don't think we did. Help me remember. I don't think we got to this. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go through this just in case. Um, so we left off um, with relative velocity, 
Remember, relative velocity is different. It's not just you're looking at the whole scene and looking at how fast they're going. Relative velocity looks at a specific perspective and looks at that object's motion according to that perspective. So remember when we went up here, right, if we look this, this guy's velocity relative to the track or the train car he's on is two meters per second west, right? This is my stationary. Just looking at the track, if I consider that my zero, my coordinate, how fast is he going? Well, he's moving two meters per second west That's what, this way on the track. But if I take a step back and look from the side, and I say, what's his velocity relative to Angela? She's watching him running backwards on the cart while the cart's moving. So this is where you have to, velocity is a vector, so you need to add the vectors. If they're in opposite directions, well, this is, if this is, say, positive x and positive y, well, this is five, positive five meters per second. This whole thing is moving because she's watching it move. But then at the same time, he's running the other direction, two meters per second. That's a negative. It's in the negative x direction. So according to this coordinate system, we would say this velocity relative to Angela, or from Angela's perspective, is what? What's his relative velocity relative to Angela's perspective? Heart's moving five meters that way. He's going two meters the other way. What's his like total velocity? Two meters that way. Three meters this way. How'd you know that, John? Yeah. Positive five. The whole thing's moving positive five. And he's running, excuse me, negative two. The negative direction. The other way you think about it. Every second that Angel watches, this car moves five meters this way. So he moves five meters this way. But in that same second, he goes two meters this way. This is his ending point in that one second. Well, if this is two, this has to be three. So from t equals zero to t equals one, right? He's only gone three meters that way. That's his relative velocity, relative to Angela. If I do relative to this, well, he's moving with it, so he just went two meters this way in one second. That's what relative velocity is. And it'll always ask it, what's, you know, Brody, I can't remember if it was Brody or if it was Blake, I think. What's Blake's velocity relative to Angela? Or what's Brody's velocity relative to the cart? Whatever it says relative to, that's your reference point. You have to consider from that perspective. So if we go to the back side of, again, oh, shoot. of, again, worksheet 1.e on relative velocity. This is now looking at arguments. This is the scenario we have. Blake's running on this train as the train is traveling. We have situation A, situation B. In which case is Blake's speed relative to the ground the greatest? Well, this isn't the ground. I don't want it relative to the cart. I want the ground. Well, that's where these guys are standing. So I need to consider their velocity in each scenario relative to an outside perspective. So we need to look at, okay, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cross out the incorrect things. 
So looking at Blake's statement, he says, I'm running the fastest in case A. Is that true? No. Is he running the fastest in oh, this scenario? Right. Yeah. So that part, that just that statement, that's true. He is. 20 meters a second that way, 10. 20 is faster. Doesn't matter the direction, it's just the speed. Therefore, I will appear to be moving fastest relative to the ground. Who cares what the train is doing? Do we agree with that? Let me cross this out. He's wrong. It does matter what the train's doing because the train's in motion. It's affecting his velocity. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because we're looking from here, yep. Is this statement true? Therefore, I will appear to be moving the fastest relative to the ground in case A. Do we think that's true or not? What B relative for A? What's his rel velocity relative to the ground here? This is positive x direction, we'll say. He's running negative 20, isn't he? 20 west. But the train's moving 10 east. What's his velocity from the ground or an outside perspective? 10. Positive or negative? Negative, so this way. Does everyone agree with that? Every second the train moves 10 meters this way, but he moves 20. So the result is he only ends up moving 10 back. So this is negative 10 meters per second. That's his velocity relative to the ground. Now let's do this side. In this scenario, What's the velocity relative to the ground? This is a positive 10. And the train is also positive 10. So how fast does he appear to be going from the outside, the ground? 20. Does that make sense? The train moves 10 meters every second, and he's also moving 10 meters per second on the train. Both the velocities are in the same direction. So you just add them. So then if we look at this statement, he's saying he runs the fastest in A. That's true. He's running faster in A than in B. He concludes, I will appear to be moving the fastest relative to the ground because of that. Is he right or is he wrong? From the ground, from the outside view, which velocity is bigger? Case B. So Blake is wrong. This is not true. This is true. He's running faster here. He's 20 meters per second, only 10 here. He's running faster here. But his relative velocity is greater in this scenario. And that's because his running motion and the cart's motion add up to a greater effect. How about Carlos's statement? He says, no, the train does matter. Well, that's true because we just excluded the statement the train doesn't matter. So we leave that. But since 20 plus 10 is greater than 10 plus 10, you're right that case A is where Blake is the fastest. Carlos said that 20 plus 10 is bigger than 10 plus 10, so that case A, Blake is moving faster relative to the ground. Was Carlos right or not? Yeah, so we can, we'll, we'll leave this. John, I like your point. He said, yeah, this is true. This is just math. This is 30, that's 20. 
fine. But his conclusion was, you are right that Case A is where Blake is the fastest. We disagree with that. So their argument is wrong. They had, their evidence was fine. There's nothing incorrect about it. But their conclusion, their reasoning was wrong. Now, Angela says, Blake's running the fastest relative to the ground in case B. We agree with that, don't we? The relative velocity is greater in B. So we, we, got, we agree with her. Her reason is because Blake's velocity and the train's velocity are in the same direction. That's true. Angela's still correct. Or she hasn't said anything wrong. And they add up to 20 mile an hour or 20 meters per second east. She's still right. 20 meters per second, we can say east. West. But in case A, Blake's velocity is the opposite direction of the train, and they add up to 10 meters per second west. We got the same thing, right? But wouldn't we agree with everything that Angela says? Yeah. So, so this is an example of how you can have good evidence. It's not wrong. There's nothing incorrect about that, but you use it in the wrong way. Your conclusion is not correct, and there's no connection. Here, the evidence is correct, and then her reasoning is correct. Therefore, what she's stating is correct. So again, this, this claim, you make a claim, you give some evidence to support it, and then you explain why it supports it. That claim, evidence, reason, you'll see that a lot. That's just a key part of science. You can't just blindly say stuff. Like when Lily put that other dude in the machine. Okay, I appreciate that. All right. Are there any questions about relative velocity? No? Do we have a grasp on it? That was a little complicated, especially when you first see it. It doesn't really make sense. The key thing to remember is relative velocity, you first need to know, okay, relative to what? What's my vantage point, the perspective I need to consider? And then basically do your vector addition. If I got two velocities, I need to add them up. Well, they're in the same direction, so they <clears throat> just add together. I'm going to add these two, but this is a positive, that's a negative. So my result is going to be a negative 10 this way. So, so that's relative velocity. Now, again, I apologize that it's just been worksheet. Um, I know they're not the most lively, but to start, we, we there's a lot of basic stuff that we just got to figure out before like we can jump into like a lab with the carts and be able to collect data and know what we're looking at. So just collect position track data, we need to know what it means know that we can get velocity from it, so I apologize this feels maybe hopefully, well, I hope it's not boring, I understand if it is, it's just worksheets and I apologize. Um, so this one, again this is worksheet 1.f, constant velocity. Um, Now we're drawing a velocity time graph, and it gives a scenario at the top, and then we look at like the evidence and the claim, and then we're going to look at, if you'll see, there's, we're going to look at the area under a curve. So that'll look, that'll be a little different and a little new. I'll let you wrestle with that on your own, and then I'll break it down. There's a lot of unit analysis on this as well. So we're looking at this one, 1F. One
is constant velocity. We're looking at velocity time graphs, but now we're looking at the area underneath the curve. So far we've just looked at like the slope. Now we're doing the area underneath the curve. So go ahead and work through this one. And we'll touch base together.
um, on this one, it's a little tricky. It's asking for a velocity time graph, not position. When you what you're plotting is the y-axis is velocity. So v measured in meters per second. Velocity versus time. Time in seconds. That's what you want to plot. So at any given moment in time, how fast is it going? Um, it maybe help get started. Really quick, we're going to go back to the other worksheet really quick. Mikaya brought up a good point. Um, <laughs> just, just super brief. So Mikaya pointed out, she's like, like 20 meters per second. How like fast 40, is this? That's like 45 miles an hour. Yeah, was it 44, Mikaya? Yeah, so <laughs> Mikaya was like, huh, how fast is this? We don't use meters per second. So we don't know, like, off the top of our head, like, yeah, that seems right. This is actually like 44 miles an hour. You're right, we don't. Unlike the rest of the world. So, <laughs> we can do the math, it's fine. You're telling me the savannah's running 45 miles an hour? Yep. So, so this is a scenario where we idealize things, we make up scenarios for the sake of 
solving the problem. But Micaiah had like a gut check and was like, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. And she's right. We, people don't run 45 mile an hour. Is it? Yeah, I don't know what the fastest human speed has been. I mean, this is like approaching like cheetah territory. Like, we're not built for that. So all that to say, you don't have to like, these scenarios, they're idealized. We make them up sometimes. However, Matea, if you did a lab and you got your answer was 20 meters per second for your cart on the track, say, you're doing that in real life. So you, ex you need your numbers to be realistic. If you did your math and you calculated, yeah, like my cart, it was 20 meters per second. Your gut check would be correct and saying, wait a minute. I don't think my cart was going 45 mile an hour on that track before it hit the bumper and stopped. Uh, that, that doesn't seem right. So then it's like, okay, is my data messed up? Most likely in that scenario, you would have done like an incorrect calculation. That would be a good use of that gut check to be like, this doesn't match reality because we're using real data. This is a made-up scenario. That's why we can let it be ridiculous. But that's a really good point. So anyway, I just wanted to... If you're saying what was the fastest uh, mile per hour, was it the 27? 27? Yeah, we just looked it up. Yeah, so, so obviously that guy wasn't Usain Bolt. And even if he was, he wouldn't be going that fast. So <laughs> that's a great point. In physics class, sometimes. If you do a lab, no. Because you can't record incorrect data. We make up stuff to do math. Did everyone get a chance to work through this? Or are we stuck and want to go through it together? I'm stuck. So it's a little tricky. Again, instructions are important. Our scenario, Josh, are you with us? Are you good? Am I boring you or are you just tired? Okay. Okay, okay. All right. I don't want to be boring you guys. I'm trying not to. The scenario, you got a constant motion. It means its motion doesn't change. You release it and it travels 5 meters per second straight for 10 seconds. I need to make a velocity time graph. I'm making velocity versus time. So here I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I want so 0. That's, the, that's an important step. Make your plot and you need to label the axes, the units, and give some numbers. You need those things for this to be useful at all. So when I, when I released it, how fast was it going? What? Five, right? So even though it hasn't gone anywhere, technically I would draw it like this. After point zero 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 one seconds, right after zero, it's, it's at five. That's what it started at. At five seconds, how fast was it going? It was constant velocity. It was constant motion. That means everything I plot for the whole 10 seconds is going to be 5 meters per second. That is my velocity time graph that describes the motion of this object. Now, we're going to figure out evidence for the physical meaning of the slope. I also did that wrong. Oh, the graph. No, I didn't. But yeah, you were you trying to do a position time graph? Yeah. Some of you guys were drawing like, okay, it after one second it went one meter. Then it went two meters, whatever. That's position time. We need velocity time. That's good. So the slope of the line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? No, 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 the slope. Slope is how much it's angled. It's zero. It's flat. Rise over run? 
doesn't rise at all. It would be 5 minus 5 divided by 10 minus 0. It would be 0 over 10 is 0. What are the units? Slope is rise over run. What's my rise? Meters per second. What's my run? Seconds per second. Rise is meters per second. Run is seconds. My units are meter per second per second. I'm going to put the ditto note so I don't have to write meters per second per second again. Does anybody know what that's the unit of? what that term in physics is called. What do we call the change in velocity? Yeah, but del yeah, delta V, that's, that's correct. Slope is how much the velocity changes every second. What is it called when you get onto the interstate, when you get on the ramp at 30 mile an hour? Yeah, you accelerate and my speed increases every second. My speed changes every second. When you have a velocity, how it changes per time, per second, this is acceleration. Right? Remember, position time was where is your object at at any given moment. When we did the slope of that line, we had meters in seconds. If we do the slope of the position time graph, it told us how much the position changed per unit time. Well, meters per second, how much a distance changes in amount of time, that's a speed or velocity. Now, we're plotting velocity versus time, and we're looking at the slope, how much the velocity changes per time. That's acceleration. The slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration, and it's telling you how does the speed of your car change every second? How much does it change? In this scenario, what's the acceleration of this object? Just determined the slope is acceleration. What did you say, Brody? It really isn't one. Why do you say that? Yeah. He just said, well, the velocity isn't changing over time. It's the same. It's not changing at all. Another way to say that same thing, the slope of the velocity time graph is zero. Another way to say the same thing is, the acceleration of this car was zero. Its velocity did not change over time. You see how all three of those are connected? The acceleration zero. The slope of the velocity time graph is zero. Or the velocity didn't change over time. They're all the same thing. All right? Now, we get a little different. How am I going to do this? All right, let's just imagine I still have my graph here. Right? The area under the line of the velocity time graph. How do we find the area? The area under the line, that's all this, isn't it? This was our line on the graph. We want the area under it. Well, how do you find the area? Boom, length times width. Here's a length, here's a width. It's equal to five, right? Zero to five, this is five units long. Five what? What is the units of this? Meters per second. This is going to be really cool, by the way. I, th I thought it was sweet when I learned it. Hopefully you guys do too. 
That's my length, we'll say. Now I need to multiply it by my width. What's my width? 10 units. 10 what? Yeah, this is measured in seconds. If I do my math, 5 times 10 is 50. What's meters per second times seconds? Meters, uh, meters per second times seconds. This is just, so this is unit analysis. This will be really helpful. Hey, John, are you with us? <laughs> as best you can, follow along. I don't want you to miss this stuff. So we're doing unit analysis. If we do the area of this box underneath our line of the velocity, this is five units long, five meters per second long. The width is 10 seconds. If we do five times 10, we get 50. Well, what are the units? This is just multiplying fractions. What happens if I have one half times two? Don't these cancel out? Or I could do two over two is just one. Well, units are the same way. I could do meters times seconds over seconds, right? Well, things cancel out. I'm left with meters. So the units for the area of this rectangle is meters. The one, that's probably a little weird. How'd you get meters from drawing an area of this velocity time graph. The bigger question is, what does that mean? This is actual data. This is physics. We have 50 meters. What is meters? Huh? It's the length. It's the distance. It's 0 to 50. It's 50 meters. It's the length. What do you think that could mean for the, this scenario. This was a cart that you put on the ground. You start it and it goes five meters per second, same speed for 10 seconds. What do we think about Aiden's thought? He said it was how far it went. <laughs> I, so in science, we shouldn't judge who's saying it. Sometimes there's experts that get credibility, but in science in particular, you have to, you can't say something without evidence. So Aiden, what evidence would you say to support your claim that that 50 is how far it went? I'm challenging you because it's, it's hard to give a specific reason. One reason I'll give for you is this is a distance. That area was 50 meters, our math works. The units work out and they come up to meters. Meters is how we measure distance. That agrees with his claim that that's how far it went. He's talking about it went from here to here and it was blank distance. The area was in meters. That's how we measure distance. So that evidence matches his claim. Do we believe that yet? Or do we want some more evidence? We can get more evidence. So this is now looking at, okay, say that's our evidence, let's explain it. But really what we're doing now is explaining why this works really. Constant motion vehicle, it's traveling at a velocity of what? What was our cart moving at? What was its speed? Five meters per second. If that's the case, every second, how far will it move? It moves five meters every second. Every second, how far does it move? It's not, I'm not asking trick questions. Sorry, my fives and my s's look the same. After two seconds, how far has it moved? 
it goes five meters every second. In two seconds, how far is it gone? Ten. Velocity is not changing. Every second, it moves five meters. If you let it go for two seconds, you've done two five-meter segments. That means 10. After three seconds, that's 15. Five, 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 15. How many seconds would it take to move 25 meters? Trevor's got five. That makes sense, right? Five meters every second. If you do that five times, that equals 25 meters. Does our area under the curve being 50 meters and saying that that's how far the car went in total? Does that make sense using this reasoning? Yeah. If it moves 5 meters every second, but I let it go for 10 seconds, well, it's 5 meters every second, but it does that 10 times. 5 plus 5 plus 5, 10 times, is 50. That matches Aiden's claim that the area under a velocity time graph is the distance it traveled. What's the fancy physics term for how far something went or how far something moved? No, that's how fast it moved. Distance, yes. The fancy science physics term. Starts with a D. I know it's just vocab, but it's really important in science because it means something very specific. Displacement. Displacement is the, the, the physics term for how far something went. Specifically, from start to finish. Remember that? We did that delta x is x final minus x initial. You look at two points in time and see where did it start and where did it end? How far did that go? Distance is just how far it traveled. If I let this car go for five seconds and then I turn it around instantaneously somehow and let it go five seconds back, it still went 50 meters. Right? Five meters per second for five seconds, that's 25 meters. And then it turns around and comes 25 meters. What's my overall displacement? Zero. I look at initial and final. Well, it started here, went 25 meters and came back and ended here. Zero minus zero is zero. The displacement. The total change in motion from start to end, that's what displacement is. In this case, it's 50. Now, on that note, I want to add something to this. I'm going to add this to kind of we're going to have the same graph let's draw that scenario that I just gave it's still the car at constant velocity, 5 meters per second, but we're going to let it go one direction, five, meet, or 5 seconds, and then somehow instantaneously turn it back and let it come back again. So half the time, right, it's 5 meters per second. This is the positive direction. So I go like this. Right, that's the first half. Does that make sense? I'm just letting it go, and it's going 5 meters per second for 5 seconds. It gets a total distance away. We know it's 25. What happens when I instantaneously turn it around? It's coming this way at what speed? 
Do I put that here? Do I just keep going? Yeah, so where do I plot that five meters per second this way? Because it's not in the same direction. It's not going this way anymore. That's what I have to plot. It's going this way. How do I put that on a velocity time graph? What do you say, Maggie? Negative. Negative five. Right? This goes back to the coordinate system. We have two dimensions, really only one, x direction. It's not going this way. So that means there's a positive direction and a negative. If I turn it around, I'm going negative 5. And that goes for 5 seconds, right? We said the displacement's not the same, right? It didn't go 50 meters total. It didn't go from here to 50. It really went here to 25, but back. So it should be zero. That should be the area under the curve. Area under the curve is the displacement, how far it went from start to end. How does that work? I got two squares. If I add them up, it should equal 50. But I know that can't be right, because that's not what happened. Its displacement was zero. How do I make sense of that? I know my displacement needs to be zero. Because it started here, went back and ended here. Didn't go anywhere in total. Well, if I know the area under the curve needs to be the displacement, I need these two areas to equal zero. There's one. There's two. What's, what, what is this? Five meters per second times five seconds, right? Isn't it the same down here? It's a negative five. My width is still five seconds. Right? But what's my height or my length? It's negative five. What happens when I take 25 plus negative 25? Get a big fat zero. Now, what we know happened physically, it displaced zero meters. It went down and came back. Started and finished in the same spot. No displacement. This rule still works. The area under the curve for a velocity time graph still gives us the displacement of that object. It still works. An easy way to think about it, you can either label correctly, and like John said, well, this is a negative 5. It's 0 to negative 5. So that's negative 5 units. Just put that in my math. You could skip that step and just know anything above the 0 point, this is positive. Because this is positive velocity, or positive direction, positive displacement. Anything below the line, like John said, is negative. So I just know any area under my axis, horizontal axis, is a negative and anything above is a positive, and I need to make sure I add those correctly. Positive plus negative, zero. All right? So that is an additional thing where it still works. Any questions about that? Anybody think this is, like, cool at all? Because I was kind of blown away that I'm just calculate an area of this graph and it happens to mean something in reality and that it works. 
I think it's cool. Virtual students, just so you know, everyone is cheering and excited. You can't see it, but they're all pumped out of their mind. See, I told you. Thank you for that. Also, my physics teacher in high school, his catchphrase, he would do a demo or something, and he'd just go, physics, and just leave it at that. Any demo he did, that's all he did. Um, so then the last part, quantitative analysis. Let me get this back on. So we did all this. Now, rewrite the equation for the area. The area, well, let's see, the length. What was the length? Guess this, I don't like this. We need to flip it. This is the length. What was the length of our graph? Yeah, second. That's t. t is the variable for time. When I see t, I need to plug in however long that time was. We almost will always use seconds. We always use the base units. So seconds, meters. It's a new force and it'll be newtons. So that's my length. What about my width? What was this? It was the velocity, right? But because it was a rectangle, we knew it was constant. So what can we replace it with? What do we know it was? What do we know this was? Yeah, but from our specific scenario, I should say. We, we can do better than just a variable. It's phi. We know that. So for this graph, instead of just putting the velocity, we just put phi. What were the units of that? And what did it equal? Remember, what was the area under the curve? What was the fancy term? Displacement. You could do x. Sometimes you can see delta x. Displacement, change in position, change in x. This one, I'll, I, I like to use this a lot. Delta x. The change in the position from start to finish, that is displacement. Not distance, not how far it went in total, but from start to finish. So there's our like equation. Again, this is specific to our scenario because we knew this was phi. The area under the velocity time graph represents what? What's the area of a velocity time graph? Fancy word. And the units of displacement, Aiden, we talk about how the position changes from start to finish. How do we measure that? Huh? No, no, no. Like, what's the unit that we measure it in? Do we measure it in miles per hour, meters? Everybody got that? That'll be a really powerful tool. I think yeah. So this next one, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to shake it up. We're not going to have a constant velocity. It's not going to be a rectangle. We're going to see how do we do this same process, but we don't have a rectangle. We don't have that easy shape. We're going to see if it still works or not.
All right, so we're on 1G, 1 1.G graphs of velocity. This guy. Do you need one? Did I miss you? <laughs> Did I skip you? Yes. You should have hollered at me. You should have yelled at me. I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Remember, we're making velocity time graphs the same as we did before, but now we don't have a constant velocity. It changes over time.
think most of you got a chance to do this. Um, so again, this is worksheet 1G. So the top, it gives us our scenario. Car in a straight line, moves to the right, starts from rest at time t equals zero, and then it gives basically the data so that at two seconds, it's going four meters per second. At four seconds, it's actually going eight meters per second. So it's accelerating. Right? If we plot this guy, what, what is this axis? I want to make a velocity time graph. What's this axis? Yep. What's my vertical axis? So I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I plot my points. At 0, I'm 0 meters per second. At 1 second, I'm 2 meters per second. At 2, I'm 4. Two seconds, I'm four meters per second. Three is six. Four is eight. That's my velocity time graph. I plot all my speeds at every given time, and I get the overall velocity as a function of time. I can even calculate at half a second how fast is that going. Well, this is a straight line, so I just go up. Half a meter per, or one meter per second. <laughs> so first, what's the slope of that line? Well, if I just do rise minus run, let's do the, I always take the big points to get the best picture. My final data point, I end at eight meters per second, and I start at zero. So I rose from eight to zero. Eight minus zero is eight. I ended at four seconds, but I was starting at zero. So the, the run, the change is four seconds. Again, meters per second per second. Sometimes you'll see it written meters per second squared. Same thing. So this really is What is the slope again? What does it mean? What's the slope of a velocity time graph mean? What we just calculated. <laughs> Not quite. Because this one, we can check that John displacement is just isn't measured in meters per second per second. Acceleration. You could also write this, like I said, as two. That's the same thing. Just so you guys know, you'll see it like this most of the time. John, did you say that didn't make sense? That's okay. By, no, by math standards, though, I, that should make sense. It does. Because that is not the same. What happens when I have... It's okay. This, this is a good question. If this doesn't make sense, I don't want you to leave it at that. There's actually a reason. But if I don't know, I don't know to spend time to explain this. Uh, okay. You see it now? Yeah. How do I simplify a fraction over a fraction? Multiply by what? The reciprocal, right? So this goes to, I take this times the reciprocal of the denominator. Nope. This is seconds over one. One is, doesn't mean anything for a fraction. So if I multiply this by the reciprocal, I'm running a light. This, Now 
Now you see it? That's a great question. This, you'll see it like this nine times out of ten. But it's important to understand, one, to ask the question, does that still work or did we break physics? No, we didn't. Let me make sure that. Yeah, they can see that. Okay, cool. Right? <clears throat> Just so that it's clear. John asks, well, this doesn't make sense to me. What's going on? How is this the same as this? If I have a fraction over a number, that's actually a fraction. Everything is just over one. Over one means nothing. To simplify a fraction, I take the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. Reciprocal means the flipped fraction. So if I flip this to one over s and multiply, I have meter times one, meter, seconds times seconds. Well, if I have two, a variable multiplied by itself, that's just squaring it. So that's how this is the same as this. You'll see this most often. All right? So if we go down, um, everything's covered up. The slope of the velocity time graph. What's it equal to? We did that, right? We calculated up here. I did the math. I just don't have it. This unit is acceleration. Remember that? The slope of the velocity time graph tells you rise over run. How does the velocity change over time? That's what acceleration is. Acceleration equals delta v, right? Acceleration, the slope, is how the velocity changes with time. v is delta x, the change in position. You guys aren't calc-based, so you don't need to worry about this, but the really cool thing is calculus actually works in physics. <laughs> it's really cool. If I have the position, I'll have a function. If I take the derivative of that function, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Well, the slope is velocity. So that means the derivative of position is velocity. So if all I'm doing is calculating the slope, well, that's just a derivative. Well, if then I have velocity time and I find the slope, that's the same as taking the derivative. The derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line. If it's a straight line, the tangent line is the line itself. So the derivative of velocity is acceleration. You won't need to worry about that. That's just calc based. But it's really cool because you can just use calculus to do all this. And you can do it for really complex functions. If your velocity looked like this, I could tell you, I could tell you the acceleration at any given point. I could tell it to you here, I could tell it to you here, or here. All that aside, sorry, I can't help myself. It's really cool. The last part of this is the area. It gave you the area. One half base times height. It was a triangle, wasn't it? What was the, the width or the base? Four seconds. The height? Yeah. Eight what? And it's the area under the curve. If I do eight times four, that's the rectangle. It's one half because triangles you take the half, which should make a lot of sense. 
This is half of that rectangle. So if I do the area of the rectangle, then I cut in half, that's my triangle. So my area, one half base was four seconds times eight meters per second, right? What should I call the area? Not A. What was the area under the curve? Yes, fancy word, displacement, or delta x. Again, I like delta x. They put x. I like delta x to be more specific. They're the same. What was my base? What was the actual variable I measured on my base? T. T is the variable for time. That's what that axis was. What was this? This one, be tricky, or be careful. What was the variable of the height? I didn't measure at this point and come up with this velocity. I measured at this point. What does that represent? What specific velocity? It started at zero and got faster and faster, faster and ended here. Velocity, was it the initial velocity or was it the final? Final. So this one is a little weird. When you have a triangle, you don't plug in V because I don't know which one it was. It changed. The other situation, it was constant. It was literally just a line. 5 meters per second for 10 seconds. It's just a rectangle. This is a triangle. This height is this point. That point is the final velocity, not the initial. So if I have a linearly increasing velocity that makes a triangle, I can do this formula, but I need to remember I need to do the total time that I'm looking at, and I need to do the final velocity the height of the triangle. The height of the triangle will be like that last velocity. The area under the velocity time graph is what? Let's do, let's do it. Equals one half times four seconds times eight meters per second. Right? What's one times four times eight? Eight, 16, yep. 32, what's the unit? Nothing times seconds times meters. So I have meter seconds. Denominator is 2 times 1 times 1 is 2 seconds. Excuse me, teachers. We need Taylor Ulrich to please come to the office. 16 meters. That's the displacement. This one's harder to make sense of, like, with a constant motion, you can just think, okay, it goes five meters every second for 10 seconds. I just do five a bunch of times, and I get 10 or 50 meters total. This is a little harder. Every moment in time, you're going a little bit faster. So it's, it doesn't, like, click. It's not intuitive. But it's the same process. Where the area under a velocity time graph tells you the displacement. What happens if I go like this? If I start at a negative speed, I got two areas, don't I? This is a negative area. This is negative. This area is positive. I need to do two calculations. This height would basically be the initial since it's this is the highest point. This is the height, and then how long that took. This, it would be the final, this data point. This is a positive area, that's a negative area. 
We're going to add them together to get the total displacement. Basically, what that means is I would start here. I would go in the negative direction, but I'd slow down. And then I'd start coming back this way. Well, it depends on if I go, if I start here and only end up here, right? I go in the negative direction, but I slow down, slow down, slow down. Eventually, I stop, and then I start going in the positive direction, and I start coming back. If this area is bigger than this, that means I passed where I started. I went from zero to its positive distance. If this area is bigger than this, that means... I went this way and came back, but I didn't quite get to where I started. So I went from zero to a negative distance. I would have a negative displacement because the total area would be negative. So you need to keep in mind the positive negative, otherwise it's the same. The area under the curve for a velocity time graph is your displacement. How far you went from start to end. You could also do this displacement for half the time. That works. I'm just calculating this area. We can do that. What was the displacement after half the trip was finished? Easy. I'm only looking at half of it, so I'm going to do the area under that half. Easy enough. All right. How do we feel about that? Okay. What's the last one? What? So what's the last one? This one? Yeah. You tell me. Area under a velocity time graph is what physical quantity? What is it telling us? When we calculated the area under a velocity time graph, it gave us the displacement. Make sense? Really cool. This will be really important. Um, in a lab, you can use these to interpret your data easily. Sometimes you'll, give, you'll be given a graph and you'll have to figure out all this information just by looking at a graph. I will try and find the carts and see if I can get data collection working for next time. I'm going to see if I can figure out where the equipment is and we'll try that. Otherwise, that's all I got for you and we'll see you... Thursday.